Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Thanks for joining us. We're going to have a really interesting show today. We, we have uh, some truly amazing technology to showcase. And uh, we're doing this actually with more technology because uh, our guests are joining us from uh, Buffalo, New York, uh, Dr. Chow Chan Gan and Dr. Howen Song, excuse me, sir. Uh, Dr. Gan is a, with the electrical engineering department at the University of Buffalo and is the founder of a group called Sunny Clean Water. And Dr. Song is the chief technology officer at Sunny Clean Water. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. It's very, very good of you to take the time and on a Friday evening to, to come join us here. Uh, Dr. Gan and Dr. Song have developed a, a really interesting, a very old technology uh, of solar distillation. Now, maybe you can relate uh, just sort of the very fundamental principles of what passive solar distillation is and what it does. Sure. So, Solar distillation, we actually use the solar energy to heat the water. Then we will evaporate the water to generate the vapor. So the next step, if we condense this vapor, we can get the sealed water. So that in this case, most of the inorganic contaminations like heavy metals, a lot of chemicals, they can be removed. So people can produce the clean water, drinkable water, using this way. So importantly, we don't need any electricity, so we, we only rely on solar energy. Therefore, this is an environmentally benign technology. Right, and, and uh, this sort of distillation process actually happens all the time. That is, uh, yes. our oceans are all the time, the water is evaporating, going into vapor form, condensing That's up right. in clouds, precipitating and running off on land in streams and lakes. Yes. Right, so this, this is sort of, it's, it's the natural water cycle, but in a constrained, yeah, in a constrained format. Yes. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Now, one of, the, one of the things, I mean, solar distillation has been used by a lot of people over a lot of years, and people have developed all sorts of different designs for yeah. uh, doing solar distillation, and it's great because, as you point out, its real power is that essentially water evaporates, but the salts in it, the minerals in it, the contaminants in it typically do not evaporate with it. The, the bacteria stay behind, the viruses stay behind, really only the water evaporates, the water condenses, and so you end up with very fresh, very clean water at the end of this. Yeah. Right. So, but, but traditionally the problem has been that it's not been a very efficient process, right? That is, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy gets wasted in the process, right? That's true. And what, what, what sort of a typical solar, uh, old-fashioned solar still efficiency? Okay. Yeah, the old technology, for example, people use a container with a black color. So then the, the, this bulk container filled with the water. So this black color will absorb the sunlight and heat the bulk water. So we have to heat the entire water. So the temperature of the entire bulk water will increase so then they will evaporate. So like we cook the water, we boil the water in, at, at home. Mm -hmm. So the, this efficiency is really low. Relatively, you know, usually it's only uh, 30 to 40 percent. Right. And, and, and that's, that's really the, the beauty of, of what you guys have, have figured out. You, you figured out how to take that whole excess heating of the water out of the, out of the process. Uh, yes. And maybe you can talk a little bit about, about sort of uh, you know, how that, how that came about? What, what was your insight into how that you didn't need to do that, really? Sure, sure. We, basically, we developed uh, improved thermal management technology related to solar energy. So we developed a system floating on top of the bulk water, and uh, we also developed a kind of a, uh, how porous the fabric material, so also on top of this floating system. So this Material, fabric material, usually you can consider the tissue, you know, tissue that can absorb the water, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, the, because of the capillary force, the water from the bottom can be transported to the surface. So since the material, the fabricate is, is black, so it will absorb the solar light efficiently. Mm -hmm. In this situation, we only have to heat the surface water absorbed by this uh, fabric paper 
We don't have to heat the entire bulk water. Therefore, our efficiency is boosted. Right, right. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, we have, we have a diagram that sort of shows that, that, that process. Yes. Right, so uh, just also walk through this diagram. Uh, basically, on the right-hand side, you're, you're showing an individual unit floating basically on a styrofoam block or something in the, in the water. The water yes. is absorbs by capillary action up through those black, the, the black uh, uh, paper. And then Correct. Yeah, your solar right. energy is just heating up just really that black paper, a very thin layer of water, becoming very efficient in terms of, of evaporating <coughs> Uh, water off, and then the, the whole unit is enclosed, as is shown on the left, inside multiple versions that unit are enclosed in a plastic box that uh, collects the water. Excellent. Okay. And yeah, I can, I can see that that's, that's really, it's, it's very sensible in a way as to, to uh, you, you've, you've cut out this whole unnecessary heating part where people have been heating up a large volume of water, and we all know water has tremendous heat capacity and, and yeah. so you can dump a lot of heat into water before you do much with it, before it heats up much. Uh, yeah. and instead, you, you basically have figured out that you really only needed to heat just that water that you wanted to evaporate off, you know? So that, that, was, that was quite quite an insight, I think. Um, and uh, so then you, in your initial design, when you, when you did this, you, you began, you realized you, you were achieving quite high efficiencies, right? Can you maybe yeah. uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, yes. Just based on this system showing uh, in the uh, picture, uh, we realized uh, around 88% energy efficiency. In mm -hmm. other words, 88% of the solar energy are used to produce vapor rather than used to heat the bulk water. So this is, uh, at that time, it's a record high efficiency. But recently, we actually we improved it further. Right, and, and let's let's talk a little bit about that latest improvement. So you basically yes. you change the the way that this uh, absorbing uh, tissue layer is shaped, right? Instead of having yes. it lying flat on a on a surface, it, it actually comes up and hangs freely. Yes. And the the trick for this structure is that we just want to enhance the surface area of this uh, uh, evaporator structure. So compared with the first design, you can see the first design is a flat structure. Now we try, we try to in, in, enhance the, the, the evaporation surface area, therefore we just uh, produce a triangular structure. But in this case, the projection area is the same, but uh, for this new structure, it's, the surface area is much larger. So under the same solar illumination, the surface, the uh, light intensity, light density, on this larger surface area is much lower. Therefore, the surface temperature is also lower than the first design. But in this case, we, most of the solar energy are used to generate vapor rather than to heat the vapor or heat the water. So our efficiency is much higher. So actually, in principle, we can enhance our efficiency up to 100%, which means all the solar energy are used to evaporate the, uh, water rather than heat water. Right. So this is a breakthrough, yeah. That, that, that is a breakthrough indeed. If you're getting very close to 100%, you're, you're working at, a, at an, amazing, an amazing efficiency. That's, that's I agree. virtually I unheard agree. of in, in, in any, uh, certainly in any mechanical process. You're, you're, of course, talking about an energetic process rather than a mechanical one here. But, uh, but knocking those molecules off uh, and just using the solar energy so it only goes to that and not heating up a big bulk of water, is that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, this, I'm sure this did not happen overnight. You, what, what was it? Maybe you can sort of step back a bit and tell us about what kind of research you were doing and, and what brought you sort of to, to look into this. Okay. So actually, recently there is a, uh, this is a really hot research topic. Actually, uh, in in last year, uh, National Academy of Engineering has a global challenge forum, and Dr. Song was, and me was invited to uh, attend that uh, workshop, and Dr. Song had a, a presentation there. So actually, water scarcity is one of the global challenges. Right. So that, that's the motivation for my group to do the research uh, along this direction. We started this research in 2016 because a lot of groups, uh, including MIT, uh, Rice University and uh, another university, Nanjing University in China, they are working on various uh, 
advanced nanomaterials to enhance this uh, solar vapor generation process. But my group, you know, we feel if for the material is too expensive, it's still difficult to uh, design, you know, for, for, for practical applications. Therefore, we focus on, you know, improved thermal management system using low-cost materials. So this is our, you know, motivation. So we already worked on almost three years, and we had some progress. Yes, that, that is that is very interesting, and you, you bring up a point I wanted to, to touch on. So th this black material that you use is a, uh, you, you said it's sort of a tissue like it's almost like a, a paper towel or something in, in that sense, but it's, but it, you lay you lay or you treat it in some way with, with some special material. Uh, actually, the the lowest cost of material is carbon. Actually, carbon is an abundant material right. available in this on, the, on our planet. Therefore, we only use a, we can use a low cost carbon powder to realize a very very good oh. solar absorption. Oh, interesting, interesting. That, that's great. Again, a very very inexpensive uh, sort of low technology uh, yeah. uh, way, way to approach this. That's 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 uh, super good to to, to think about that. Um, and, but is, is there anything special about the, the paper or, or is it a cloth that, that you're using actually to, that this black surface rides on? Uh, definitely, you know, this is a kind of material engineering and the surface engineering uh, research. We are also working with uh, some uh, collaborators to identify, you know, which material is the more evaporative. For example, actually the, the, the fabric industry like uh, uh, Nike, those kind of uh, uh, for sports uh, clothes uh, industry, they are also looking for this kind of materials uh, for the sports uh, clothes. So we are actually looking for into this area, you know, to, to, to find the better material for evaporation. So this is uh, uh, also a research topic. And uh, we are also uh, looking for the fabric that can last for a long time, so it doesn't need very uh, much maintenance, for example. Yeah, so that it can last long and. Uh, so it's uh, cost effective. Yeah, that, that's that's a very very interesting issue because you're, you're going to be putting this solar still out in different people will put it into different conditions: hotter, cooler, more sun, less sun, uh, cleaner water, saltier water, water that has other contaminants in it. And okay. uh, is that going to influence sort of your choice of, of paper, or will pretty much all be the same? Definitely. Actually, because uh, if this is one of our interests at this moment, because our company is uh, uh, is working on outdoor test. So the environmental conditions at different areas uh, varies a lot. So we have to consider their feedback to you know to think about uh, uh, optimization of our product and select the different materials. Ah, uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, this is this is very exciting stuff to to learn about, um, and and you're. you're be commended for uh, looking into this. And there's so many different things. That, you know, on the one hand, it seems like such a simple idea, just evaporating water and having it condense. And but there are, you know, there, there are many subtleties to it, as you're pointing out. And, and that's that's wonderful to learn about. Uh, I'm told at this point that we're going to need to go off for a, a brief break here for about one minute. But um, and then we're going to come back and, and dig a little more deeply in, into this whole process and, and how it's how it's developing and all that. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Chao Chang Gian and Dr. Haoman Song uh, from Sunny Clean Water have been, are being my guests here on uh, Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and we'll be back in one minute. Minasan, konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de otodake suru. Konnichiwa Hawaii no Nihongo Hosou no Kosto, Kunisue Yukari desu. Kakushu Getsuyobi no Niji kara otodake shite imasu. 日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週の月曜日2時から、ぜひ皆さん見てください。ホストの国
all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Good afternoon and welcome back to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Joining me today from the University at Buffalo and, uh, and uh, are Dr. Chow Chang Gan and Dr. Haoman Song, both of Sunny Clean Water. It's a new, a new company they formed to uh, promote and advance a great, highly efficient solar distillation process where they simply employ passively the, the, the energy from the sun but they do so in an amazing way where they've gotten an efficiency very, very close to 100% efficient. So virtually every single photon from the sun that hits, hits the surface of their device knocks water out of the liquid state into the vapor state, and yet you're not heating up any extra water, you're not wasting any heat, you're not wasting any energy. The water is simply evaporated off and then recondenses, uh, giving you clean, fresh water. Uh, <coughs> an amazing story, actually. Uh, but there's, a, there's always a big leap between getting a good idea and maybe demonstrating it in a laboratory and then actually forming a company to, to go out and make this a practical application in the world. And perhaps you could talk about uh, some, some of the hurdles you, that you faced in, in moving ahead. Uh, actually, we started a company uh, last year. And uh, so as a very, uh, very new startup company, the one problem is that we are we need some resources. So uh, right now we are supported by the NSF, the National Science Foundation Award called Small Business, Business Innovation Research. So uh, that's, um, uh, they are very supportive and they help us a lot. And uh, we are right, right now, so we are developing the portable system, uh, which can be easy to carry and uh, easy to use and uh, easy for maintenance. And uh, that's uh, one thing we are developing. And uh, one challenge we have now, and also uh, we have to make sure that the water we generated is uh, okay for drink. So we are testing the quality of the water right now, and uh, try to make sure everyone can use the product very safely. Yeah, uh, excellent. You of course have to do that. I mean, we can all say yes. Only the water evaporates, and only the water should condense and, and be, be recaptured, and no contaminants. But you always, of course, need to check that out and. and do the proper yep. test to be sure that, that that's really true. Um, yep. uh, but but the numbers you, you were getting off your early tests suggest that, that indeed you, this does reduce contaminants very efficiently. You, you, you knock out essentially all the, the heavy metals out of water, you leave salt behind, you would leave presumably any bacteria, fungi, uh, yeah. microbes. Heavy metals and uh, microbes and uh, also some uh, organic compounds also can be removed. Right, and, and one of the nice things about your design is because it floats in a body of water, you're not, you're not left with a residue. Many stills, typically you've, you've filled them first with some baseline of water, and they, they then have, you have, you're left with a brine at the end or a residue that is contaminated, sort of a more densely contaminated residue. And instead, by having yours just float in the water, you're just essentially pulling, in a sense, pulling the fresh water out of that system and leaving the rest of it undisturbed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the advantage of our uh, solar still that can float on top of the water and uh, just absorb the water from the bottom. Right, it makes it very uh, applicable to a lot of different situations, too. So I immediately looked at that and thought about uh, boaters, people doing boats, particularly long boat trips, should love this uh, because you, you could float one of these behind your boat and just keep tapping the fresh water from it. Uh, you could float a whole train of them, as a matter of fact, behind your boat, right? And if you... Yeah, yeah. We, actually, we are looking for potential uh, customers uh, for this kind of uh, boat uh, users, like uh, fishers, uh, where people perform fishing in, on the ocean. Mm -hmm. So they may need, especially if the boat is small, they may need su such a kind of uh, water produ uh, uh, purifier. Exactly. It's, it's actually funny. I was just the other day talking to uh, some people who are, are trying to reintroduce small, mainly wind-driven or solar energy-driven surface vessels around the Pacific Islands. A group who's very interested in doing this, they've already got a number of the boats out there, and these are small boats. They can't carry, you know, that sort of every square inch is uh, critical to carry cargo and carry passengers and all, so 
something like, like that, it's probably be a very, a very useful thing for them to, to, uh, to have. They, they'd probably, probably be very interested in it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, our, our device is foldable, so it can be stored in a very small area, a, a very small volume, so it's very easy for carry. Yeah, and again, that's 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 a real difference. A lot of the solar stills are sort of they're they're big. They have a big case, uh, have a rigid panel on them that they're very they're very bulky. They're very cumbersome to, to work with. Uh, and, and again, you've you very neatly uh, done done an end run around all that. Uh, the design you're, you're, we're showing here is actually an older design uh, where there was a, a sort of a rigid plexiglass top, but now you've actually got one where it's it's a more of a, a dome tent. Type affair, and uh, uh, it's it, it's quite a, quite a quite an interesting difference. Um, so maybe at this point, what, what would be good is is to take a look at the uh, you guys produce a video that really sort of summarizes all the stuff that we've been talking about for the for the last uh, part of the show here, and maybe we can bring up that video and uh, just just help our help our audience really get a, get the get the whole picture. Yeah. The shortage of fresh water is a global challenge afflicting people throughout the world. Only 3% water on this planet is a drinkable, and it is not equally distributed in the world, even in areas with adequate fresh water sources. There is still concern about water contamination, including bacteria, virus, and heavy metals. This is where sunny clean water can help. Our solar drink product is a system to purify natural water sources. Solar drink system can work on a sunny day to purify water from rivers, lakes, or ocean. Due to the black color of the fabric, the solar energy can be converted to heat efficiently. In this process, most solar power will be used to evaporate water at the surface only. The vapor will go up and condense on the coat cover surface. Using this technology, our system can boost the performance of existing portable solar distillation systems by up to three times. Zero electricity, zero carbon emission, zero worry about water quality. Our product is suitable for outdoor activities like hiking and sailing, and is important for areas affected by natural disasters. Wherever sun shines, sunny clean water works, we have solutions for personal use as well as utility-level applications for small communities. Our units are low-cost and can be customized. We're here to meet your unique needs in clean water generation. We use solar energy to produce fresh water. We are sunny clean water. Wow. That, that's, that's really amazing to see, and you, you, you capture everything very nicely in that video about, about the whole process and some of the real pluses of it, how it could be used in emergency situations, how it could be used by sailing vessels or boats. Um, and again, on the, on the small islands where I work, a, a little unit like that that can produce, uh, what is it, two and a half, five gallons a day of fresh water, you know, that, that can support a person or a small family, put two or three of those units, you could support a, a little compound of uh, you know, a larger family. Uh, really, really. Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's going to make a big splash out in the Pacific Islands. I think. I feel forgive the little joke there. Um, so, uh, where do you now stand? You just you, you started doing some field testing on this, right? You've field tested it somewhere around around your own home site there. Yes. yes well, we are doing the field test right now, um, actually along the research. And uh, first, we field tested in the University of Buffalo, this is the lake in our university. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we also have our third party uh, agency that's in uh, Rochester that can help us uh, test it and also to test the quality of the water. And uh, we also have a customer uh, who is in the Barbados that is also helping us to do the uh, field testing. Uh, also, we hope we can do more the field testing in, uh, for Islanders, for example, like that. 
So especially Hawaii is one of our target areas. So another target is uh, a disaster, after uh, disaster uh, relief, for example, uh, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Haiti, and probably recently Florida has some uh, natural disasters. So we, we really hope we can help. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, and I, you know, when you get your design fine-tuned and, and can really produce a large number of them, you could, you could see these could be tremendously valuable to, to move a whole bunch of these units into a disaster area and, and enable people to, to get water from distillation uh, rather than having to truck water in or fly it on in, all, all of which are very expensive processes, ultimately. Um, I, I was reading uh, some stuff recently that, that in the, after the earthquake in Haiti, they brought in an aircraft carrier, which had a big reverse osmosis system yeah, to buy yeah, yeah, water. Sure. They calculated that water cost $160 a gallon, ultimately, yeah. to produce that. And that's, that's insane. I mean, people need water, so it's worth any price, but you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that, right? You should be producing it cheaply, uh, inexpensively, with free solar power, like, like what you're doing there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And so uh, you're getting started on this. I'm sure people are, are interested uh, to, to follow up on it. And I know you've got, you've got actually a rather nice website there at www.sunnycleanwater.com. It's all just, yeah. just one word, sunny clean water, just, just like you'd expect to spell it. Uh, and it's actually an amazing website uh, that really shows your products very nicely and, and very cleanly indicates what it's uh, what some of the, the issues and the advantages and the, the processes are. So that's, that's uh, great. I, I, I suspect there's going to be a lot of people interested in, in following your, your uh, thing. Do you, do you have a sense about when you're liable to get these things into some scalable production where people could actually just sort of order them? Yeah, we are working on that. Actually, we are preparing for, uh, to, to uh, communicate to, we, to bring in uh, investment so that we can uh, that will enable us to uh, ma uh, scalable manufacturing. So hopefully we can bring this product uh, to the market uh, by the end of uh, uh, next year, 2019, so that you know, a lot of uh, people can try to use our product. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that'd be really exciting. And it's great, great to hear you can do that kind of fast turnaround. That, that's uh, remarkable. If you just started this back in 2016, this whole line of research, if you can, within three calendar years, after the start of a line of research, produce a, 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 a marketable product that's serving yeah. the world and doing good. That's, that's a truly remarkable achievement. Yeah, another thing is that this might be a very good uh, uh, kit for education. Actually, a lot of middle school students, they, they contact us to request uh, this kind of educational kit because our product covers the water scarcity, mm -hmm. the water quality, energy, and uh, you know, global Challenges. A lot of uh, these kind of uh, global concepts can be covered uh, by this kind of uh, technology. So uh, I, we can produce a lot of uh, educational kit for those maker programs. Wow, wonderful! That's that's great. That's 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 beautiful to, to think about. That I, uh, of course, it makes great sense. You, you educating the, the youth of tomorrow while providing good today. You know, that's yeah. who, can, who can ask for anything more, right? <laughs> Well, uh, thank you guys very much for, for being on the show. Uh, Dr. Gian, Dr. Song, very nice to, to see you and uh, wonderful to learn about your uh, amazing innovation here. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I hope uh, our guests, will, our viewers will join us next week for another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii.